21 Einbinder Realtors, America's number one top seller right here in Monmouth County. Tonight, the Freehold Township Patriots take on the CBA Colts. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Lampin and along with Joe Donahue at Rutgers University for another rainy game between Freehold Township and CBA and Joe, just like the last time they met. Well, very reminiscent of the first time these two teams met. The rain tended to nullify CBA speed a little bit up front. Today we have a much bigger field and we'll see if uh, which team takes better advantage of the size here. CBA with a record of 13-1 and one in the driver's seat in Class A North the Shore Conference. Yes, they are, but what is important to remember is that Freehold Times was the only team that was able to beat the Colts this year. Okay, so we're just about ready to begin the game. Actually, the game has started in the background. It's CBA taking on Freehold Township. We'll be back with all the action right after this word from our sponsor, Century 21 Einbinder Realtors. Diversity for our high school soccer match of the week. Sponsored by Century 21 Einbinder Realtors. It's the Freehold Township Patriots taking on the CBA Colts. The match has started. There's no score in the first period. And Joe, as we mentioned briefly in the open, CBA really having a good season at 13 and one. Freehold Township, a hard luck season at eight, four and two. Both teams are quality teams, Bob. CBA, as evidenced by their record, the Freehold Township is the victim of a real tough schedule. They really are, and as we said earlier, they were, have been the only team to knock off the Colts so far this year in a one nil match that we broadcast earlier in the year. Freehold Township in their light blue shirts, CBA in the white shirts. Kevin Duffy plays it out wide. And this is Duffy. Inside, this could be dangerous. Nice play, though. Just knocked away that time by the defender, number 14, John Reel. And it was a tremendous opportunity. Jeremy Vaughn was knifing through, and he almost got through for an easy goal, Joe. He took the ball on his chest, but he didn't shield it away from the defender as he took it down. He shielded the ball toward the defense and allowed the defender to make the play. Uh, this is the biggest field by far either one of these teams has played on this year. It's a, just short of 120 yards long and a good 70, 72 yards wide. And it really uh, remains to be seen which team will take advantage of the size of the field. CBA has that great speed up front, so the width, will, the length rather, will help them. And Freehold likes to work the ball through the midfield and use all 11 players involved in the attack, and therefore the width will help that team. So which team will take advantage of the field size best will win this game. So the ball is on the far side of the field. Freehold Township putting some pressure on. Vaughn back to Schnebel. And we apologize. We understand we're having some technical problems. We're trying to get straightened out. We'll be going with one camera for the next few minutes. It's a throw in for the Patriots. Corey Schnebel chips to the far post. Dangerous ball, just running onto it. Jeremy Vaughn, he just couldn't quite get to it, but a great ball by Schnebel. Very good opportunity for the Patriots. Jeremy Vaughn on the receiving end once again gave it a great effort to get to that ball, but just couldn't get a foot to it. And a good ball by Schnebel. Uh, one thing we have uh, neglected to mention, I think, is the rain is coming down. It has been fairly steady for the last hour or so here, so the field conditions will worsen as the game goes on if the rain should continue. This game seems a lot more settled in the opening moments than the first game between these two teams. If you remember back about a month ago, the first quarter was real helter-skelter. The ball was up and down the field like a ping-pong match. And, but today's game, they're, maybe because of the size of the field, they're knocking the ball around a little bit better, both teams, and exhibiting much better soccer. Jeremy Vaughn plays forward, intended for Zimmerman. And it's played back easily into the hands of goalkeeper Mike Peters of CBA. You should mention that Zimmerman is always a dangerous factor in front of that net. Real intimidator up front. Causes defenses a lot of problems. Dave Pellin on the far side. This is Vaughn. Schnebel. Almost a good ball, Great Jeremy idea. Vaughn. Great idea, he just didn't get it over the top. Jeremy Vaughn was making a run on the right side. Played it back, Pellin fans on it. This is Duffy, turns, shields, and fires. But didn't get much on it, tried to shield him off. Actually could have played it out wide, Joe. 
He could have, but he did give it a good attempt. It's a very good idea to test goalkeepers early in this wet weather. Uh, Coach DePep has probably told his players that. Make Peters handle the ball once or twice, see if the ball skips on the wet grass. And, and uh, he did give it a good shot, but a defender got a foot on it. This is Roros. And that's number 23, Montani plays it back, intercepted by Duffy, but he can't control it. And Todd Zimmerman was shaken up a moment ago. Looks like Todd injured his right knee. Todd, number 21 for Freehold Township. There you can see the score on our Century 21 Einbinder Realtor scoreboard. 0-0, zero, zero, 12 minutes and 48 seconds remaining first quarter. There's Todd limping off the field. And Todd appears to be shaken up. He'll have to tough that one out. And replacing Todd, it's number 20, uh, Mike, Z Mike Dermer. So Dermer replaces Zimmerman. 12 minutes and 37 seconds to go in the first quarter. We have no score between Freehold Township and CBA. We're at Rutgers University. Well, there's an example of the slipperiness on the field. Craig Schnebel lets it fly. Corey Schnebel cranks up, but it's blocked. That time a block by Bogdan. And CBA looks to counterattack. Roros taken down. No doubt about that one, Bobby. And we'll set the starters for you. First for Freehold Township. Gooder in the nets. Booth, Smith, Meinster, Dermer, Pellin, Schnebel, Duffy, Corey Schnebel, Vaughn, and Zimmerman. The starting 11 for Freehold Township. As you look at number 12, John Rogers getting set to take this free kick. Uh, going back to the last game, CBA likes to play these balls to the head of Mullen. There he is. Just ne nearly got over the defense, but they were fairly dangerous on their restart opportunities in the first match. Always playing the ball primarily to the head of uh, Timmy Mullen, Jimmy Mullen rather. Captain of CBA wears number nine. It's a throw in for Freehold Township. Larry Meinster takes that throw. Duffy protects it. Nice ball outside. Dermer. Good pressure by Dermer. And CBA on the attack. Players starting to slip around a bit. This is Jim Mullen. Mullen looking for help. Corey Schnebel intercepts. Craig Schnebel turns. And it's tackled away. Nice play by David Santos. Craig really had nowhere to go with that ball, Bob. He had no support. Uh, players were running away from him, and he hadn't, hadn't much choice with it. CBA showing a much different style of play. They're keeping the ball down. This is a dangerous ball inside. A and nice play by Andy Booth, Bob. He really prevented a great goal-scoring opportunity. That uh, was Brad Johnson that sent that ball in, right, Bob? Yes, it was, and it was a sliding Andy Booth knocked it away. And it's a corner kick coming up for CBA with 10 minutes and 13 seconds to go in the first quarter. Let's get the ball, Andy Booth is a very solid defensive player, has been for the Patriots for the past two years, one of the main cogs in their defense in last year's Group 4 championship run. This is John Rogers getting ready to take the corner kick, an interesting camera angle there. You can see it all happening. Header on net, and it's in the back of the net. Great goal by CBA, they lead it one to nothing. Bob, just as we mentioned, there's the header of Jimmy Mullen. They look for him on all the restarts. As you can see, he's got a great head ball. The ball is flighted in from the corner kick right to the head of Mullen, unmarked and unchallenged. The cardinal sin by the defense, and he had no problem. And notice how he nodded the ball down toward the goal line. He didn't try to head it up in the air and beat the keeper. The most effective way to beat the goalkeepers, head the ball right onto the goal line, which he did, and the result is a 1-0 lead for the Colts. So the score is 1-0, CBA leading Freehold Township. Their first real strike at goal, Bob, the first time down the field. So let's take a look at the replay on this last corner kick goal. Okay. Now you'll see the ball flighted in, and Mullen will be coming in on the far post. There he is, up for the header, headed it down to the line, unmarked, and it's a goal for CBA. So a textbook corner kick goal. CBA leads it one to nothing. 
Jim Mullen knocked it down into the corner past goalkeeper Tim Guter of Freehold Township. Well, that was the first time CBA had really made a serious attempt into the freehold end. Uh, Andy Booth had made that good sliding tackle and knocked the ball out of bounds, and it resulted in a corner kick and then a, goal, a subsequent goal for the Colts. Because uh, unlike the first game, Freehold Township had been, this game is much more settled, and Freehold Township has had a little bit more of the ball. That's right. And CBA has also played a lot more settled, but knocking the ball more on the ground. Both teams are using the uh, size of the field to good advantage. Meinster's free kick taken. And cleared out again by the CBA defense. CBA came into the game with a record of 13 and one on the season. Freehold Township at eight, four and two. The only loss of the season for the Colts of CBA, a one nothing defeat at the hands of the Freehold Township Patriots. So CBA looking for a measure of revenge against Freehold Township. Well, they've done something already today that they haven't, weren't able to do in 80 minutes last time out. Let's put the ball in the back of the net. That's right. This is Corey Schnebel. Zimmerman back to Schnebel, to brother Craig Schnebel. A lot of Craig room with here. a lot of room, and he likes to shoot the ball, but he plays it wide. Pellin, Pellin slipping and sliding. Schnebel knocks it down. Duffy turns and fires, partially deflected, but handled nicely by goalkeeper Mike Peters. And Joe, we've yet to set the CBA starters, but let's take a look at them right now. In the goal, Peters, O'Connor, Bogdan, Real, Montani. Santos, Mullen, Rogers, Johnson, Roros, and Jamie Raymond, the starting 11 for CBA. Nice ball through, Jim Roros fires to the far post and just wide. Good run there by Jim Roros and he took the shot well. Nice diagonal ball played through to Jim on the run, on the right wing. Just pushed it ahead of him once, fired for the par far post. Place the ball should be shot towards and went wide just by a yard and a half or so. Gooder appeared to have the angle covered pretty well that time though, Bob. Yes, he did. Free kick taken there by number 12, Meinster. Johnson, Johnson alone, yes. Tried to cut it back. Andy Booth, not in a real good position that time. Tried to clear it off the side of his foot over the end line. It'll be a corner kick for CBA. 417 JDK. Your lights are on. Well, there was seen to be a lapse in the marking by Freehold Township defense that time. Brad Johnson was allowed to receive the ball unmarked in the penalty area and was able to turn and send the ball toward the middle of the area. Andy Booth did clear out of bounds. Here comes another corner kick from the opposite side now. And once again, look for the head of number nine, Jim Mullen. Okay, it'll be David Santos to take the kick. A.J. Garrido jogs onto the field for CBA. And here comes the corner in swinger near post off the bar. Oh, a tough chance. It's still in in bounds. We have a dangerous play called Bob. It will be a dangerous and CBA play. CBA will have an indirect free kick from about the seven yard line. That corner kick just previous to this was was an in swinger from the corner that the Tim Gooder was able to push up off the crossbar, not over. This could be trouble here. Referee John Cobb moves the freehold defense back the full 10 yards. I'm sure it'll be a short touch and a, a blast from Jimmy Mullen looking for a second goal Here from comes. the restart. It's a great opportunity for CBA, 5.30 to go. Here it is, and it's blocked. And the rebound taken, it was blocked by Corey Schnebel. The wall did their job that time. I wasn't sure if they had enough players in the wall from that angle, but they got the job done. And there's a dangerous ball knocked across, but handled by Goalkeeper Tim Guter. It was flighted in by Garrido. Craig Schnebel felt that he had been knocked down first by Garrido, but there was no call. And Guter with a nice punt up around the midfield stripe. And Joe, let's take a look at that last sequence. Well, there'll be a short touch, Jimmy Mullen. He will volley the ball off the wall. It'll come right back to him. Here it is back to him. He volleys it again off the head of Corey Schnevel, who is a little shaken up. But a good job by the defensive wall of the Patriots, because that is a very dangerous scoring opportunity. Okay, we're back to action. 
And that's number 18 for CBA, Jim O'Connor playing it back to his goalkeeper, Mike Peters. Four minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the first quarter. CBA leads it by a score of one to nothing. Jamie Raymond. Oh, another dangerous ball across. Jamie Raymond with some good work. It'll be another corner kick for CBA. So the Colts putting the pressure on. We'll have to take a short break. We'll be right back after this word from Central. For CBA, flighted across and headed out by a diving Corey Schnebel. CBA pounding away at the Freehold Township defense. There's an offsides. Yes, it was. Corey Schnebel did a great job with his defensive clearance on that header. But CBA is really coming on. As we said, their restarts are very dangerous, Bob. Tim Gooder. Leinster chases it down, a push called against number 10, Jim Roros of CBA. It'll be a free kick for the Patriots. And a free kick taken. Not a good ball. And just inside, trouble. Gooder off the line. And Andy Booth had to knock it away. I think that might have been a good play by Andy Booth. Gooder just a step or so slow coming off the line. He was slightly hesitant about it. I don't think that he realized that the ball was as close to the foot of Brad Johnson as it was. It was a mistake on the clearance by the defense off that free kick and played right back into the area to the foot of Johnson. And Booth made a heads up play to clear the ball out of bounds. Seabay has really been applying the pressure in the last seven, eight minutes. Here comes the corner kick. Gooder punches it away. And Duffy comes back to retrieve for the Patriots. Zimmerman tries to overlap down the left side, but he's not going to quite get to it. I think that, oh, that's an interesting call. It looked like Mullen may have pushed Zimmerman off the ball that time, but referee John Cobb ruled it the other way. And Gooder made no doubt about it that time, Bobby. Came off his line and got that one. Let's take a look at that last corner. You can see Tim Gooder high up in the air to punch it away. A nice play by Gooder. But usually when a team scores a goal, they're vulnerable to be scored upon in the next five minutes afterwards, but not so with CBA. Usually there's a slight lapse when a team scores a goal. They relax for a few minutes and the other team is allowed to come back into the match. But that hasn't been the case here. CBA scored that goal and really seemed to pick up their momentum because they've had Frio Township pinned in since their goal. Now we're down to one minute and 21 seconds to go in this first quarter. The score remains one to nothing. CBA leading Freehold Township. And I understand that we're still having some technical problems. We'll try to get things all squared away at halftime. Nice move by Corey Schnebel. Nice cutback move, but he tried one too many. And he slide tackles it away. Well, this is the kind of day that slide tackling is in vogue, Bob. That's right. Corey Sermon. Schnebel putting on a one-man demonstration out there. This is Craig Schnebel chasing it down. And some good work there by both players, actually. But Corey Schnebel now intercepts. Oh, nice ball. A little bit too long and knocked away by number five, John Bogdan. It was a good idea that the Schnebel brothers trying to work a give and go combination. Nearly pulled it off, but Bogdan made a good defensive play. We have 10 seconds remaining. Roros plays it forward. Booth plays it back. I'm not sure if he saw number four, Jamie Raymond, trying to sneak inside. And there's the whistle ending the first quarter of play here at Rutgers University, where CBA leads Freehold Township by a score of one to nothing. Joe and I will be back with the second quarter right after this. To Rutgers University for our high school soccer match of the week on our Century 21 Einbinder Realtors scoreboard. CBA leads Freehold Township by a score of one to nothing. It was Jim Mullen at the 10 minute and 15 second mark of the first quarter, scoring on a corner kick off, a, an, off of an assist by John Rogers, and the score is one to nothing. CBA and Joe, all CBA in that first quarter.
Well, after the first five minutes, and especially after the goal, they really came into the match. Friel Township had been doing fairly well up until that point, but that goal kind of knocked the life right out of him and fueled CBA's fire a little bit. And let's see if Freehold Township can come back. Bob, the, excuse me, the first time these two teams met, CBA really owned the first quarter in that game as well, but Freehold Township took the last three quarters of play to them and subsequently won the game 1-0. And interesting, Joe, in that CBA really seems to have changed their style a little bit from that last game. In that last game, they played everything long. And so far in this match, they've tried to settle it down in the midfield a little bit. Well, Bob, I think they're taking advantage of the size of the field. Uh, they're used to the small, narrow high school pitches where they're played inside a football stadium, at, such as at Free Old Township. And CBA itself has a very small field, about 56 yards wide. So CBA is making better use of the size here down at Rutgers, where we have a nice you know, 120 by 70, 72 yard wide pitch. And that foul will go against number nine, Jim Mullen. It'll be a free kick coming up for Freehold Township from about the 23-yard line. Freehold Township has been fairly successful with these. Uh, Corey Schnebel usually is involved uh, for headers on the far post, but Craig Schnebel usually is over the ball, but we don't see that today. We see Pelland and Zimmerman over the ball. Watch for a touch to number 10, Schnebel for a volley. And there, there it is, it they knocked it across. The CBA wall came inside, headed it away, up in the air, and Peters makes the save. Well set up by Friel Tangent, but the ball that was played across to Craig Schnebel wasn't quite far enough. It didn't clear the far side of the wall, and they were able to block his shot without too much difficulty. Dave Pellin. Corey Schnebel slips, gets up, and manages to keep control. And CBA brings it up slowly. 17.55 remaining, first half, one to nothing. CBA leading Freehold Township. And a sliding A.J. Garrido knocks that one into touch. Quick throw in for the Patriots. Similar to the way we opened the first period, Bob, with Freehold Township more or less in command. An obstruction has been called from 60 yards away. How many times have we seen that with the two-man system? I don't know whether we should get into that one again, Joe. Oh, we won't. Let's see if they attempt the same thing. They're set up similarly. Dave Pellin over the ball. Craig Schnebel about six yards off. I think uh, CBA is ready for it. Well, they play it through. Vaughn runs onto it. But can't quite turn on the ball. Knocks it over the end line. Goal kick coming up for CBA. So CBA, or excuse me, Freehold Township tried to play the ball through onto the onrushing Jeremy Vaughn. Just a little bit too much pace on that ball. And Vaughn couldn't quite turn it back. Interesting idea. They set CBA up well for it with their first uh, free kick. But Jamie Raymond wasn't fooled by that one too much and pressured Vaughn into playing the ball over the end line. With us in the booth, Bob, we have Bob Riasso head coach at Rutgers University. Bob's been at Rutgers for three years now and has really built their soccer program up into the number six team in the nation and where they currently sit this year. Bob's team is undefeated at, Bob, the record at exactly at this time is what? Right now we're 10-0 and two, Joe. Uh, our two ties coming to uh, Rhode Island, 1-1, and Princeton last, last Friday night, 0-0 down to Princeton. Two tough matches, a rough week for your boys. Yeah, it really was. We were real pleased though they came back. We were able to beat uh, Temple and get back in the winning column on Wednesday and we beat them 1-0 down in Philadelphia. Uh, Temple was undefeated up until that point, were they not, Bob? They were 9-0 at that point. That's a chance right here. And a dangerous chance for Freehold Township. The ball was chipped over the wall. Todd Zimmerman sneaked in behind the defender and just couldn't quite get too much on that one. And into the hands of Mike Peters. That was to the left foot of Todd, Bobby, and he really couldn't put much of a foot on it at all. Probably the best opportunity thus far in the match for Freehold Township. Uh, Bob, how are your boys re reacting to that number seven rank? Is that a surprise to them? Uh, when the season began, you knew you had a lot of talent. You had a great uh, deal of recruiting uh, with New Jersey players. Is that a surprise to them or yourself? Tell us a little bit about that. I think being six in the nation surprised us a little bit. We thought we could be a tw <laughs> top 20 caliber team, but uh, being six surprised us a bit. But we're trying not to really be concerned with it right now and just play every game one game at a time and, and see what develops as the season goes on. Well, the season goes on. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of it left. If you've got Penn State coming up uh, today, as a matter of fact, a very tough match for you. Uh, Penn State always a national power. How do you view that one? 
Well, Penn State's had a little rough luck this year. They haven't been scoring a lot of goals. I think they've taken about four losses, but they're still a very talented team. Their biggest problem, as Walt Barr has told us, is that they're very young in the back, and they are you know, making mistakes in the back that freshmen won't make. Don't we all know about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure is right. Uh, how about a tournament bid? How does your team sit in terms of getting an NCAA bid? Uh, will the win today kind of lock it up for you, or what do you have to do between now and the end of the year? I think if we win today, we'll have the inside track on the tournament bid. Uh, we've beat, we'll have beaten most of the tough teams in, the, in our region. Excuse me, Bob. Here's a good scoring chance for Friel Township. Kevin Duffy cuts it back. Nicely headed away by Jim O'Connor right on the post. He saw Peters go off his line. O'Connor covered up for him and came up with a fine defensive play. Freehold Township putting some good pressure on. Todd Zimmerman has gotten open inside twice. That time it was played outside to Duffy, but Zimmerman now trying to make his presence be felt inside that 18-yard area. Well, Freehold Township has really done well in the opening moments of the second period. Uh, but similar to the first period, eh? but CBA is always a dangerous threat on that counterattack with that tremendous speed up front. You know, uh, Freehold can't put the ball away into the net. Look for CBA to send someone out of their end and cause them some problems coming the other way. And this one cleared away once again. It'll be a throw in for Freehold Township. Once again, we apologize. We're experiencing some technical problems. At this point, we're going with one camera. And here comes a throw in for Freehold Township. Ron Smith. Raymond clears it out, but Andy Booth into the attack. And they fight for possession. And there's a foul, Bobby. Taken down from behind, no doubt about it. Dave Pellin caught hooking the ankles of Jimmy Mullen. And a tough break for Freehold Township because they'd really been putting the pressure on. You don't like to give away that foul in that area. It was kind of unnecessary. Oh, this is one tackle. of those, as we said, this is one of those days where slide tackling is in vogue. Guys are on the ground all day. It's a wet, misty kind of day out there. It hasn't really come down hard, but it's like a good, steady mist, enough to make the field just slippery enough. Pellin flights the free kick inside the area, headed out. Oh, a mistake. Zimmerman right there. It was flighted inside by Mike Scheinberg. Number two came up from his right back position, flighted it inside. Zimmerman, expecting the mistake by Peters, almost stole one there. He's that type of player, Bob. Always are in and around the goal. A real nose for it. And he's one of those guys that gets those opportunistic goals. Goal cures mistake like that. He's right on top of it. Matter of fact, that's how Freehold Township was able to score their goal and beat the Colts the first time these two teams met. Jamie Raymond tries to keep his footing. Mullen. Freehold Township. A lot of room here if they use it well. Good ball by Corey Schnebel. All kinds of room for Craig Schnebel. Flights it inside Zimmerman. Again, inside of his defender, John Reel. And if they get the ball over the head of that outside defender, Zimmerman's right there. I think we're getting a little bit of intensity, a little bit of excitement is starting to come into the match, Bobby. The first quarter was kind of laid back. Neither team exhibiting a lot of it, but now the fans are getting involved in it. The slide tackling is getting more uh, prominent, more vicious, and a little bit of excitement is starting to take place here. There's a big rematch for these two teams and a big Class A North game. Okay, with the score one to nothing, we'll take a short break. We'll be back right after this. University for our high school soccer match of the week, sponsored by Century 21 Einbinder Realtors, America's number one top seller right here in Monmouth County. Fog beginning to drift in at Rutgers Stadium. We've got rain, fog, and a one to nothing ball game. CBA <laughs> leading Freehold Township. Jim Mullen scoring at the 10-15 mark off of a John Rogers corner kick, and that's been it so far. One to nothing, CBA on top of Freehold Township. With us in the booth, Bob. Uh, once again, we still have Bob Riasso, Rutgers coach. I wanted to 
ask Bottle the question too while we got a chance. Bobby, your upcoming schedule, how does that shape up? What do you have left besides Penn State? Well, we have Seton Hall on Wednesday, which is not one of our tougher matches, but then we come with Connecticut next Sunday right here again in Rutgers Stadium. We have a tremendous high school preliminary game that day. We have Carney from North Jersey. I think they're right now ranked third in the state. And Del Rand from South Jersey who's ranked fourth in the state as a preliminary game. Have you put together quite a few preliminary games, such as this one here today this year. Uh, how's that package shaping up for your uh, program this year? Well, you know, Joe, as you do in your program, too, we're trying to sell the best in high school and college soccer in the state of New Jersey. It's such a great state for soccer, and showcasing games like this is what it's all about. Exactly. I agree, Bobby, all the way. Yeah, and a tough break for you, Bob, and uh, by fact that the, the rain and all keeps the crowd down. I'm sure you would have had a much larger crowd had the weather been a little bit better. And after this match, you will be taking on Penn State. There's a great shot, and Guter makes the save. That was Brad Johnson, a sophomore, Bob, who scored 40-some-odd goals as a freshman on the JV level, and he's a real player. Watch out for that kid in a couple years. Zimmerman, shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder there with John Bogdan. CBA now trying to come back into the match. It's been all Freehold Township for the last 10 or 12 minutes, but CBA coming back into it. What's made them so successful this year, Bob, is when they do come forward, they don't waste many chances. As you saw there, they did come through the one time Brad Johns with a tremendous volley on goal. They know how to put the ball away, and that's the key to success. Gooder off the line. Bobby, how about naming for us a couple of your uh, New Jersey homebred players that you primarily have on your Rutgers team that have really contributed to your program this year, really helped you out? Well, we're, we're, I think we're 90% Jersey boys, and I'd say we start usually nine or ten of them. Of course, Davey Mazer from Columbia High School was drafted by the Cosmos out of high school. Bobby Joe Esposito, the all-time leading goal scorer in the state, who graduated last year, has come on and been our leading scorer as a freshman. He can score some goals, that's for sure. Yeah, he's an awesome kid. And he's a great person, too, and he works real hard, and here's a chance. Yeah. Unlucky there. Another tremendous chance for Freehold Township. CBA's defense covering up nicely as goalkeeper Mike Peters comes off the line there. Seemed to have been well trained in that area, Joe. The, the entire defense that time retreated towards the goal area. Well, they had made a, had a little bit of a lapse to allow the ball to be played into that area, and it wasn't defended real well, but they got away with it. Low drive on the corner. And that shot taken by Ron Smith. A day like today, it's good to take those efforts. Wet ground, as we said earlier, uh, you know, funny things happen in this kind of weather. Getting back to those Jersey players, Bobby, you mentioned Bobby Joe Esposito. He scored 160 or some crazy amount of goals in high school. And uh, Dave Mazur, who is a senior now, for you, I believe. Well, he's a junior, actually. He's a junior? Yeah. Will you still, uh, you still have Dave playing in the sweeper position for you? Yeah, we moved him up against Temple into the midfield because we've had some problems in the midfield. But he's, you know, his best position is sweeper, and that's where we're going to leave him. Um, <laughs> Now we have Davey Yeager in the goal, who was a high school all-state player and an all-American from uh, Del Riverside High School in South Jersey. And he's got eight shutouts so far this year. Michael Tellerico, a boy from Ocean Township on the shore, has done a great job for us at Sauber. You know, the list goes on and on. Uh, we're all Jersey boys. We're real proud of that, about that. A lot of people should take heed and notice that, that the talent is here. Uh, how many kids have you and I seen escape the state, go to Duke and uh, UVA, just to mention a few recent ones? But, Penn State, these guys all over the place. You're going to see a couple of Jersey boys today. I believe Greg Mears from Columbia, and I know uh, Billy Brennan from St. Rose, and a couple of Chatham Township boys, I believe, they also have up at Penn State. It just shows the abundance of talent we do have here, and guys like yourself and some of the other programs in the state that try to utilize these players and keep them at home are doing the right thing for Jersey soccer. Well, there's no real, real reason to go away anymore. In the past, uh, before some of the younger coaches that are coaching now, like yourself, myself, and a couple of the other boys that are out, Players went away to find top flight programs. They don't have to do that anymore. You're playing great competition, we're playing great competition, and, and uh, mom and dad can drive 40 minutes and see right. a great game every weekend, you know? That's what it's all about, is keeping them home. They don't have to get in the car and go eight hours and uh, spend the weekend down somewhere to see games. All right, Bobby, well, thank you very much for being with us. You're welcome to sit with us uh, th throughout the second half. I know you have to get down and get your boys ready for the game. Uh, Penn State will be a tough match for yourself, a good test for your guys, and uh, good luck to you in today's match. Thanks a lot, Joe. Good luck over at Monmouth, though. All righty. Thank you. We'll see you again. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Good luck to you. Five minutes and 21 seconds remaining. 
in the first half. The score remains one to nothing. CBA on top of Freehold Township. Freehold Township has really come out here in the second quarter, fired up, had some great opportunities, but unfortunately for the Patriots, have not been able to put the ball in the back of the net. Well, they've been knocking on the door, Bob, no doubt about it. They're really coming hard, but CBA, as we said, always that ever-present counterattack danger, as we're seeing one right here. It's really important for Freehold Township after putting on this much pressure to be able to come away with a goal. Nice move there by David Santos. You know, to relentlessly put on pressure as they have been throughout this second period and not come away with a goal is a very frustrating thing to your players. And should your opponents, in this case CBA, come away with a goal and go up 2-0, it really takes the wind out of your sails. And you, know, you just see people sink and put their heads down and mentally it's tough to get back into the game. Very true, Joe, and uh, it's going to be important for Freehold Township to continue to put the pressure on. If CBA does go up two to nothing, it's going to be tough to come back. CBA with some great team speed. There's a foul. Andy Booth was tripped coming out of his own end. Uh, the next goal will be very important if there should be a next goal. This last game <laughs> ended up 1-0. Right. But if uh, CBA should go ahead 2-0, it would really be difficult for Freehold Township to come back. But CBA has had a pretty high-powered offense throughout the year. Their attack has really put some balls in the net. And I think Freehold would prefer a low-scoring game. I would have to agree with you at that point. And little doubt about that foul. That one committed by Jim Roros. He, he jumped on the back <laughs> of Andy Booth. Andy is not an easy guy to knock down, but little Jim Roros has succeeded in the task. Ron Smith to the corner. But headed away that time by Jim Finnerty. Kevin Duffy was the intended receiver on that long pass. CBA now looks to counterattack. And Booth gets there, tries to play it back to Guter. Guter kept it on the field. An interesting application of the rules there, Bob. His whole entire body was off of the playing field, save the ball, except for the ball was still on the field, and therefore it is not out of bounds. And as you see, he's coming away with a uh, goalkeeper's punt. So Guter made the good save. The ball has to be entirely out of bounds. And Guter just managed to keep it on and prevent a corner kick. And CBA has been very dangerous on those corners today. Now it's Freehold Township. Good ball there. Corey Schnebel right back. Number 15, Ron Smith. I think Smith we'll see a shot. and fires. And over the top, it'll be a goal kick. For CBA, so Freehold Township with some midfield buildup. The entire CBA defense retreated, gave them all kinds of room in front. And it was put over the top. Two minutes, 33 seconds to go in the first half. CBA leads it one to nothing. Zimmerman, to, Zimmerman. Yes, he was able to shield the ball fairly well and was fouled from behind. I guess that's Finnerty. He gave him a little kick in the back of the legs. Oops. Referee Kavanaugh made the call, and Freehold will have a uh, restart very similar to a corner kick. Obstruction was the call by referee Tim Kavanaugh. Indirect free kick coming up. Corey Schnebel to take it. Knocks it on the ground. Kevin Duffy tried to flick it on. Knocked across again, and they clear it away. Kevin du Duffy did an excellent job of flicking that ball on. How he ever turned at the angle he had to redirect well, it. No, that's just a problem. He didn't have enough of an angle to get a good shot on goal, but he did deflect the ball, flicked it on well, and the keeper was there. Timmy Guter, uh, not Timmy Guter, rather. Mike Peters for CBA was there to, to cut it off. Another good chance for Freehold Township. CBA has played a bit more defensive. They've kind of fallen into a defensive shell. Their midfield is falling right back on top of their fullbacks when Freehold Township comes forward. This is allowing Freehold Township tons of space, miles of space in the midfield area. Something CBA is going to have to uh, contend with and talk about at halftime. And as CBA does retreat, Freehold Township will have to continue to let him fly from 25 or 30 yards away. There's really not room behind the defense to chip the ball over. Well, they really can't get in behind the defense, but there is room to shoot from the midfield. And as we reiterate, as uh, we must reiterate once again, that's the place balls go in the net in this kind of weather. 40 seconds remaining in the first half. 
Push called against CBA. It'll be a free kick for Free Hill Township, and referee Kavanaugh will stop the clock. I believe he's going to pull out a card. CBA has been guilty of knocking the ball away from Free Hill Township on a restart five or six times. So he's going to nip it in the bud here once and for all. So the caution given against number nine, Jim Mullen. For delay of game and 31 seconds to go. Here comes the restart. This could be their last real opportunity of the first half. Well, this is a chance. On. He didn't get all of it. Craig Schnebel tried to flick that ball on to the foot of Zimmerman, but he couldn't get it. Couldn't get it all. 10 seconds. And they won't get the shot off. <laughs> they were coming at CBA right until the final whistle of the first half. And there's the whistle ending the first half. CBA leads it one to nothing. We'll be back with the second half right after this. Einbinder Realtors, America's number one top seller right here in Monmouth County. And there's the story. CBA leading Freehold Township by a score of one to nothing. It was a match in which Freehold Township put tremendous pressure on CBA in that second quarter but could not equalize. There's our scoring summary. CBA scoring at the 10 minute and 15 second mark of the first quarter that should read. It was Jim Mullen on an assist from John Rogers and it's CBA one Freehold Township nothing. The second half has just gotten underway. And we understand that we've taken care of our technical difficulties which we experienced in the first half. We apologize. Hopefully the second half will be a little bit more entertaining for you and Joe let's hope that all the problems that the rain has caused have been corrected. Hopefully we'll be able to handle it, but the players are more concerned with the problems the rain has caused them. I don't think they're too worried about the cameras right now. Okay. Uh, CBA will have to make a couple adjustments. As we said, uh, near towards the end of that second period, mainly throughout it, their midfield was falling right back into the defense, right on top of their defensive back line, which was allowing Freehold a lot of room in the middle third or through the midfield. And the, uh, the Schnebel brothers were, were coming through midfield and causing CBA fits. And they've got to correct that problem if they want to come out of this game with another W. It'll be a throw in for Freehold Township. And I'm sure Coach Bill DePep has also alerted his players to the danger of CBA's speed and the counterattack that they can look for. CBA had been pressed into their end, but very dangerous when they have come forward. And you see that happen so often in soccer. One team will put continual pressure on for eight or ten minutes and your defense pulls up into the attack and all of a sudden you're open to that quick counter and you, the other team gets one shot in the quarter and they put it in the back of the net. And that's a real heartbreaker. As we said earlier, should there be another goal in this game, it will be a big one. And maybe the understatement of the year, but <laughs> it's also true. <laughs> Here comes CBA. CBA's out well into the second half. They're knocking the ball around, maintaining possession, pretty much putting the pressure, taking the game at the Patriots here in the second half. Jimmy Roros flights it over the top, out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick, hit the football upright, and it'll be a goal kick for Freehold Township. Freehold Township has replaced Tim Gooder in the net starting the second half for the Patriots. It's Steve Condrup. There's Steve wearing the red shirt. So Gooder played the first half. Condrup probably will get the entire second half. And that's a nice problem to have, Joe, when you have two quality keepers like Gooder and Condrup. It's a very nice thing. A lot of coaches are going to this more and more nowadays because a lot of quality keepers are really being developed. America seems to be the land of great goalkeepers, Bob. If you look in the NASL, the majority of the top American players are goalkeepers. And Condrup tested right away a hard shot by Brad Johnson. And Condrup showed very soft hands that time, handled that hard drive without any problem whatsoever. He took that one on the chest and cradled it in well. And uh, Johnson, strong right foot of drive right on net. Corey Schnebel. Plenty of room. Switches the field nicely. Dave Pellin looking for some help. Was hoping to have Dave, or excuse me, Scheinberg overlap him. Players love to slide on these wet fields. Well, and they're slip sliding all over the field, Bob. It's very wet. 
Plus, yesterday there was a football game here. I understand from Coach Bob Riasso that also uh, Thursday and Friday this week they had about 25 high school bands in here for some type of a band jamboree, and they've been trampling up and down the field for two days and hasn't done a whole lot for the conditions. Okay, trip is the call. Referee John Cobb made the call, and it'll be a free kick for Freehold Township. And John Cobb held the whistle. There was a trip, held the whistle to see if the advantage would be invoked. It wasn't there, so he correctly made the call. Hard shot over the top. Zimmerman took it. And Joe, you making or you mentioned, excuse me, all the different high school activities up at Rutgers and Rutgers University certainly making a tremendous commitment in this last year or two to developing the high school programs and trying to keep some of New Jersey's athletes in the state of New Jersey. And there's one of them, Todd Zimmerman, plays soccer and basketball for Freehold Township. And how do you view this this new push by Rutgers to go after the New Jersey athlete? Joe, you're a, I view in it a as way, competition. That's, that's how right. I view it, Bob. Uh, Bob Riasso does a real fine job with recruiting. He's been at Rutgers three years, and I've been at uh, Monmouth just two. So he has had a little bit of a head start on me. And Rutgers, being the state university, has a much larger name than Monmouth College. But I think we've done a very good job of keeping local players at home, more or less, or bringing them to Monmouth College. And uh, Bob is competition. We had a very tough match with Rutgers early in the year. They beat us 1-0, uh, which is a great result as far as we're concerned, uh, being Rutgers is number six in the nation. And we're playing all freshmen, so just a little bit of propaganda for the Monmouth College soccer program for a minute here, but we're doing a great job and uh, just to be able to compete with a team like Rutgers in our first year as a Division I team. And it certainly is quite an accomplishment. This is CBA on the attack. Oh, he was taken down. He didn't get a chance to shoot that ball. Yes, a foul was called and a good call. As he wound up to, to fire there, his left leg, or his right leg rather, was pulled out from underneath him. And Joe, speaking of Monmouth College, on Thursday night at 8.30 p.m., we'll have the Monmouth County semifinals. Friday night, it'll be Notre Dame taking on Monmouth. And on Sunday night at 7 p.m., the Monmouth County finals from Wall High School. So a lot of soccer coming up on TV 34. Thursday, it's the Monmouth County semifinals. And then we'll have Monmouth and Notre Dame in the finals of the Monmouth County tournament. And soccer certainly plays a big role in our sports coverage. There's a direct kick or an indirect kick, excuse me, it was hit hard, but wide of the net, goal kick coming up for Freehold Township. Now that was a direct, Bob, that was a trip, but they elected to push the ball to the side and fire on goal. Not really well taken, it kind of was off the side of the foot and went wide of the net. Bob, although that, I'd just like to say a word about that Monmouth-Notre Dame game, uh, although we're broadcasting it on Friday night, that game will be shown, or be played live, rather, at Shore Regional High School Tuesday night. October 25th at 7.30. We're expecting a very large turnout. It's Monmouth Ocean Soccer Association night. All you young players out there who are Monmouth Ocean Soccer Association members can uh, get in free to the game by just wearing your game shirt or uh, bringing a player pass and bringing mom or dad, being accompanied by an adult, you get into the game for free and you'll get a Monmouth College Soccer bumper sticker. All right. And it should be a good college soccer match, and uh, there isn't much college soccer in our area at night. There really is. It's virtually the only game all year at the Shore area, and we'd like to have as many of you Shore people out there to witness the game as we could possibly get. Okay, we wish you well on that one. Taking on Notre Dame. They've got a 13-3 and record, Bob. They've been beaten by Indiana University and uh, two other strong teams out in the Midwest, and they're going to be a real contender, and we're going to have our hands full that night. Okay, it'll be a corner kick coming up for Freehold Township. Don't forget in that Monmouth-Notre Dame game, all youth players admitted for free as long as they have a player pass or a shirt. The parents get in. I believe it's $2 to cost yes. for adults, and we're looking forward to a great crowd at that, that one. This is a goal kick, Freehold Township. Let's make that a corner kick, not a goal yes, kick. It was, but Craig Schnebel really took one heck of a diving attempt at that one. Well, I think the conditions have really become a lot more sloppier. This second half is, there you, there's a great example of it. As just as I'm saying it, two guys fall flat on the rear ends. But the, the game has deteriorated due to the conditions of play. Missed kick there, you know, the ball, wet ball going off people's feet. Guys having trouble with footing. It's really tough to score goals in games like this. So often one goal wins matches. <laughs> Guys are falling down, fans are getting excited. 
It's getting sloppier out there by the minute. And we're only in the third period. And we do have 12 minutes remaining in the third quarter. The score remains one to nothing. CBA leading Freehold Township. We had a goal scored in the first quarter at the 10 minute and 15 second mark by Jim Mullen, and that's been it. CBA on top, one nothing. Another problem with these high school games, Bob, in this wet weather is most schools use a certain type of ball that has a sort of a plastic or like a rubber type finish. And when it gets wet, uh, that ball really skips, really takes off in that wet weather. It doesn't get heavier as a leather ball would, but boy, it, it just takes off. It seems to gain speed in the wetness. Offside the call. Jeremy Vaughn couldn't quite get back onside on that right side of the field. And the rain continues to pour down the field. Very sloppy at this point. And one of our cameramen is out in the rain. And that's no great job either to be standing out in this downpour. But Joe, do you change your tactics at all? I know that we we talk about building up in the midfield and you like to see the ball on the ground and so on and so forth. But in weather like this, you almost have to go to the long ball. Well. I don't know, should I disagree, Bob, or what? I don't know. Be my guest. Uh, <laughs> it may cause the defense more problems, trying to clear long balls and this and that, but it's also very difficult to put passes together of a longer nature, unless you can put them right on people's feet, because the ball's skipping away from your uh, intended receiver at the far end of your pass, as well as it is from the defender. But there is a lot of problems defending in this weather. Well, it's going to be tough for anyone to score a goal through the remainder of this match because it's really becoming a quagmire out there. Okay, pretty big word. Of course, you're a college guy now, quagmire. <laughs> you people in the college ranks should know the meaning of all these large vocabulary terms. But when I mention a long ball, basically I mean flight the ball inside the 18 and take your chances. You're, more, you're talking more or less English style is what you mean. Flighting balls into the box, hoping for a defensive error, a goalkeeper get caught trying to come off his line. What is commonly referred to as the English style of play. Okay, I thought you meant strictly kick and run, just knock balls 60 yards ahead. No. Since it's not, I won't disagree with you. Okay. okay, fighting balls into the box is a good strategy in this match. I but certainly wouldn't like to see the game deteriorate into a kickball match, that's for sure. But both teams are having enough problems getting the ball toward each other's box. Uh, the ball has been pretty much in midfield throughout this third period. It looks like someone's going to approach another team's goal. John Real looking for room to cut it back, but defended nicely. It'll be a throw in for CBA. Tackled away that time by number 20, Mike Dermer of Freehold Township. Eight minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Not too much happening in this third quarter at Rutgers Stadium. Substitution coming into the match. Number 13 for CBA, Jim Finnerty. We'll take a short break. We'll be back right after this. And CBA putting some pressure on. You can tell the substitutes in this match, Bob, by the color of their shirts. That's right. We've got one real bright one out there. That's Mr. Jennings, I believe, for CBA. Or Finnerty, rather. Number 13, he's got a bright white shirt on. Some of the numbers are practically obscured by the mud. David Santos and Schnebel shoulder to shoulder. They get tied up. Which way do you point that one? And that one will be a hold called against Schnebel. Santos knocked down. And just a little bit of frustration. They got wrapped up in each other's arms and legs. And Schnebel, a little bit stronger than Santos, knocked him down. Santos went flying. I think that one looked a little bit worse than it actually was. But CBA will get the soccer ball. There's the free kick. CBA. 
Not a strong shot, but a good attempt nonetheless. Condrup with the punt. CBA putting a little more pressure on in this quarter than Freehold Township. There's a nice ball to Craig Schnebel. And Corey Schnebel keeps the ball on, tries to turn, shields it well. And that one thrown out of bounds. Now it'll be a Patriot throw in. Number 15, Ron Smith. Puts the ball back in play. And it's David Santos. Knocks it out with his knee. And Freehold Township moves it up the field via the throw in route. Schnebel quick throw to Kevin Duffy. Tries to run it down. And can't quite get to it. It'll be a goal kick. For CBA, we have six minutes and 26 seconds remaining third quarter. Score remains one to nothing, CBA over Freehold Township. Jim Mullen scoring at the 10 minute and 15 second mark of the first quarter off a corner kick. The assist went to John Rogers, and that's been the extent of the scoring. One to nothing, CBA leading Freehold Township. This is the second time the two teams have met in the season. The first time we had that one for you on TV 34, it was Freehold Township won CBA nothing, and that's the only loss of the season so far for CBA. CBA with a record of 13-1, and one, and they're looking for more. Jamie Raymond with the left foot and two wide. Condrip lets it go. Goal kick coming up for Freehold Township. Both teams having trouble stringing anything together, Bob. The ball and the, they're both at the mercy of the ball in the field, the wet conditions. That'll be a throw in, knocked over the sideline that time by Larry Meinster. <clears throat> I have both teams even on shots on goal, seven apiece. So it's been a fairly even match outside of the one goal that CBA came away with in that first period. CBA owning the midfield the last few minutes. Craig Schnebel plays it wide. Pellin tries to run it down. Dave Pellin knocks it over the sideline. Quick throw in for CBA. Jamie Raymond. Raymond to the corner. It will be a corner for CBA, Bob. Knocked over the end line. Four minutes and 20 seconds remain in the third quarter. Still waiting to get the ball back into the corner. CBA, Joe, has been very dangerous, especially in that first quarter on these corner kicks. They've got a real good header, as we said before, and Jimmy Mullen, number nine, and right now, he's unmarked on this corner kick, and this is how they got their first goal. They're <laughs> Mullen up again. Mullen and uh, Roros were up for that header and did direct it on goal. Couldn't get the kind of velocity on it that they needed. Steve Condrup was right there to gather in that header. Condrup replaced Tim Guter in the third quarter. Guter He's played a nice first half. Condrup so far enjoying a quality second half. He's been up to the task, made every play. Good ball by Schnebel to Duffy. And outside to Jeremy Vaughn. Vaughn has two defenders on him. Pellin tries to provide some support, but CBA comes away with it. And CBA with the throw in on the far side of the field. 3.05 remaining third quarter. They bring it back to their goalkeeper, Mike Peters. And Mike Peters so far today, Joe, hasn't really been called on to make too many tough saves. His defense has really done the job for him. He's been credited with three saves so far, Bob, but none of them have been real testers. This is Jimmy Roros on the run, left-footed drive blocked by Booth. Roros again tries to get by two defenders. Tackled away Santos with the left footed drive. Well over the top goal kick, Freehold Township. It's 
So David Santos saw the ball coming on that nice roll. You like to see it come that way, but Santos really reached out for it, hit the ball a little bit too soon, put it well over the top. And it'll be number 12, Larry Meinster, to take the goal kick. See how that ball skipped up there. But Conjure handled it. Schnebel plays to the corner. Corey Schnebel. And a long clear by Dave Montani. One minute, 35 seconds remaining third quarter, and they stop the clock. And evidently, they want somebody to retrieve a soccer ball for them. Uh, ball boy's getting a little bit wet and tired himself out there, Bobby. Chasing things around for 60 minutes now. I don't envy those guys. Craig Schnebel, nice ball. Andy Booth into the attack. That's not where Andy wanted it to go, but it got but it there. It wasn't a bad <laughs> idea. I think he was trying to fire one on goal from 40 or so some odd yards out. Went off his foot and almost right onto the uh, oncoming right winger. Okay, there's the whistle ending the third quarter of play. CBA still leading Freehold Township by a score of one to nothing. And we'll be back with the final quarter of action right after this. 34 High School Soccer Match of the Week. Today's match being sponsored by Century 21 Einbinder Realtors, America's number one top seller right here in Monmouth County. CBA leading Freehold Township by a score of one to nothing. The first goal of the game and the only goal of the game being scored at the 10 minute and 15 second mark of the first quarter. It was Jim Mullen on a corner kick assisted by John Rogers got up in the air and Mullen nodded it past Goalkeeper Tim Guter and it's CBA 1 Freehold Township. Nothing, 20 minutes of soccer to go on a cold, wet, rainy day here at Rutgers University. And if you're watching this match on Sunday evening, you're watching same day coverage. So if you looked out your window at all today, if it's Sunday, you know what type of day it has been. It's been a miserable day for soccer, but both teams working hard, putting on a nice performance considering the elements. And Freehold Township would like to work a little bit harder in this quarter and at least equalize and go to overtime. There's a foul, a bad foul that time. Uh, I don't think we're going to see a card. I don't believe it was an intentional foul. It just looked a lot nastier than it was. And you can see the number on the back of <clears throat> Dave Sandoz's shirt is practically invisible. He's spent a lot of time rolling around in the mud this afternoon. So it'll be a free kick for CBA. O'Connor puts it back into play. Flicked on nicely. Booth Weiser lets it run past into the hands of Tim Guter, who has replaced Steve Condrup in the net. So Steve Condrup gets a quarter of action today. Performed well. Certainly did. There's a nice ball. This is Raymond on the left side. Goes to the far post. Nice diving play Ooh. by Guter. That had goal written all over it, had not Guter gotten out there to intercept it. Yes, he did. I think Raymond was trying for a shot on goal, but that's the importance of keeping the ball on the ground and shooting with a far post. Even when your shot isn't quite on target, if Guter had not made that play, it would have been right on the foot of Roros coming in on the right wing, and it would have been 2-0 for the Colts. But Guter did make the play, and we're still at 1-0. Oh, mistake. Jeremy Vaughn. That's a corner kick. That will be a corner kick. Sliding tackle made by number 14, John Reel. And right before this corner kick, we'll take a short break. We'll be right back right after this. This is Corey Snebel to take the corner kick. Low drive. And headed out again by the Colt defense. He's on sides, and he's, and he's there. And the ball skipped by. Zimmerman couldn't quite get to it. There's the unluckiness due to the conditions. Two players were unmarked. Zimmerman and Craig Schnebel were unmarked 
on the top of the D, which is right on top of the 18. The ball skipped past the both of them. Dangerous play was the call, indirect. Snubble takes it quickly. Somebody else's legs go out from under him. A.J. Garrido. And there you can see the ball skip right into the hands of Tim Guter. He releases quickly out to number 15, Ron Smith. This is Ron Smith on the run. And Smith taken down from the rear. Dangerous play. Good tackle, Bob. He was behind the vision of the player. I believe that is what the rule is, but uh, it did appear to us that he was on the ball. I do think it was a good tackle, but you can't really tackle from the rear, and that's for the protection of the players involved. And you could almost tell that Tim Cavanaugh didn't really want to call it the way he signaled it, but that's the way the rule is stated. And it'll be a throw in for Freehold Township. This is Mike Dermer. With the width of the field being as wide as it is, teams haven't been, been able to really utilize their long throw-ins that they have. That, although that one was executed well with the flick on. Play, as it's called, the throw was made by Dermot to the head of, I believe, Craig Schnell, who flicked it onto the far post. And defender had to clear it there. And they're playing on that 72 yards or so wide field, which is something neither team is used to. And that, that long throw-in or so accustomed to in their high school uh, stadiums is not available to them here today. Nice ball, Craig Schnebel. <laughs> Somebody just <laughs> took a dive Jeremy on the ground. Jeremy Vaughn off the line, Mike Peters off the line. Great ball, knocked through Craig Schnebel to Jeremy Vaughn and off the line was Mike Peters and just took it off of the foot of Jeremy Vaughn. Nice play there by the goalkeeper. That was a big play by Peters because Vaughn was through and it really could have amounted to something for Freehold. <laughs> guys are diving all around, Bobby. They love this. It's the kind of day that players love and mothers hate. <laughs> they bring those uniforms home. That's right. Once they get wet, players like this kind of stuff. The only place this kind of game isn't fun is the guys on the bench. That's right. It is no fun being there today. was headed on that time it was number 14 John real heading it on Freehold Township putting the pressure on in the final quarter they trail at one to nothing and the Patriots know that they have to get on the scoreboard Here comes Mullen nice ball but a little bit too long intended for Jamie Raymond tried to bend it with the outstep of his right foot couldn't get quite enough on it it's a good idea nonetheless handball called against John Real, it'll be a free kick for the Patriots. 14 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this one. CBA trying to have Jim Mullins' goal stand up. They lead it one to nothing over Freehold Township. Mike Dermer to take the free kick. <laughs> Never did go off the field. Now it is. Brad Johnson, quick throw in. Jamie Raymond. Nice cutback move. Back, plays it back on the ground. Nice ball. And the freehold defense covers up. They got it onto the foot of Jimmy Roros. He tried to turn, but really couldn't get around. Just shielded it. Actually, I think he was looking for some help to play it back for the shot. He was looking for someone, think, someone to knock it to. He didn't realize that his defender had fallen down on the ground behind him. He could have turned and fired a clear shot at goal, but he turned the wrong way and was unable to see where the defender had gone. He was looking for Brad Johnson to lay a ball back to. Pellin with the throw, and this is Dave Pellin again. And Dave Pellin couldn't cut it back. Goal kick CBA. See Dave jogging back into position. And not an easy thing to do today, Joe, under these conditions to take the ball down and then cut it back. It's awful tough to plant that left foot and swing your leg around. It's a rugged day to do anything. The 
Davis is chipped in the box. Schnebel tried to chest it down, got his chest on it, but fell down. Corey Schnebel comes up with it. And a whistle on the play, referee Cobb. I believe he had a holding foul called against Freehold Township. Closing in on the 12 minute mark. CBA now looking to get on the scoreboard once again. They lead it one to nothing. This is David Santos, I think, down the right side. <laughs> and Tim Cavanaugh. Well, Tim Cavanaugh, the referee right in front of the play, was calling play on. Uh, he felt it was inadvertent contact. Both guys had just kind of bumped into each other due to the conditions. Uh, it's difficult with the footing. John Cobb, from his angle, the other side of the field, apparently thought differently. You know, that was a mistake by Freehold on clearance. And Andy Booth clears it out, throw in for CBA. David Santos to take the throw in. Freehold Township has put the pressure on CBA here in the third quarter, but have not been able to equalize. Santos. Time's running out on them, Bob. 11 minutes remain in the match. Todd Zimmerman continues to shield. Nice ball outside. Vaughn can't settle it. And that'll be a corner kick. Craig Schnebel. The swan dive there, Bob. <laughs> So Freehold Township will have a corner kick. They trail it by a score of one to nothing. They'll have to take advantage of these restarts. You can see goalkeeper Mike Peters getting set along with the two CBA players on each goal post. Low drive, Duffy tries to dummy over it. And that was Zimmerman was called for obstructing or pushing off in his attempt to shield for the ball. They tried to flick on play again, uh, drove it low to the near post of the foot of Duffy. Was able to get a piece of it, knocked it down well. And Zimmerman was caught holding off, trying to establish position inside the box. Could have been a great scoring opportunity there for Freehold. They've been much more dangerous on their goal, uh, rather corner kick opportunities in this second half. Nice ball, Schnebel shielded, got it to Corey Schnebel. He tries to play it through. Nice Tricky little move, move in the corner to escape some pressure. John Real. Oh, nice ball. Jamie Raymond slips, though. Dermer comes away with it. It's a good try from Johnson to get the ball into the field of Raymond, but he couldn't quite get all of it. Freehold Township hey. building up. First time in a while with these conditions, we've seen three or four passes been right. put together. And a good hard tackle by number 17, A.J. Garrido. Tackled that one away from Helen, it'll be a throw in for Freehold Township, number 20, Dermer to take it. And again, it's cleared away. Freehold Township continues to go with the long throw. Chipped inside. Two Freehold Township players right there. CBA tried the offside trap, but a little bit slow getting there. Well, they're not really pulling an offside trap, but they're just trying to get out of their own end quickly. But they're making one mistake in that when they do come out of their end, they're not coming out quick enough and hard enough. But when they do come out, they're kind of oblivious to the freehold tags of attackers that are still in there. That's the second time we've seen freehold guys remain unmarked after a CBA clearance and a ball being played back in toward them. It's a throw in for the Colts. Eight minutes and five seconds to go in this match. It's one to nothing. CBA leading freehold township. Second time these two teams have met. This is a Shore Conference A North contest. CBA leads the A North division by two games with this game and games with Raritan and Middletown South remaining on their schedule. So CBA in pretty good command of the A North 
conference at this point. They need victory. If they win this one, they'll have it pretty much sewn up. David Santos. Oh, nice ball through. Jamie Raymond onside, cranks and fires. But right at goalkeeper Guter. Beautiful ball from Santos to Raymond. And he did get behind the defense on the right side. Let one fly, but didn't get all of it. It was right to the hands of Guter. CBA looking to come away with a counterattack goal so they can rest easily for the last seven minutes of play here. And Freehold Township just as anxiously trying to get the equalizer. <laughs> this kind of game, Bob, is very difficult on your legs in terms of fitness level. You know, it's very hard to play in this muck and mire for 80 minutes and not get leg weary. Kicking the balls heavier, your socks are wet, your shoes are soaking wet, and you've got to be in great physical condition to still have anything left at the end of the match like this. You can see some of the players are kind of dragging themselves around the field now, and uh, you know, th th may be the difference in the last five minutes. Who's got a little bit more left physically? That was just an accident there. That, that was just an accident, no doubt about it. Dave Pelham played the ball, and him and Nolan just collided. And the foul was called. Okay, we'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. That was Jeremy Vaughn on the counterattack for Freehold Township with the ball played a little bit too far in front of him. You can see the story right there on our Century 21 Einbinder Realtor scoreboard. CBA leading it one to nothing over Freehold Township. We have five minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the match. This one played outside, Jeremy Vaughn. Looking for someone to go to. But Bogdan knocks it away. Andy Booth looks to be dragging that right leg along behind him. See that, Bob? Yes, he does. I noticed that earlier in the match. Uh, I remember earlier in the year, he had his leg all wrapped up uh, like uh, as if he had a hamstring or a quad injury. Uh, he isn't wearing the wrap on his leg today, but he's really dragging that leg behind him. And you're looking at Jamie Raymond of CBA. That was number four along with number 20, Mike Dermer. Goal kick coming up for the Patriots. Five minutes to go in the match. Nice diagonal run. Schnebel keeps it on. Room in the middle. Oh, and look at that. <laughs> Did the splits going with that one. He had some room there. Good ball played in by Craig Schnebel. Ronnie Smith couldn't come up with it as he did a little ballerina move there in the midfield. Garrido upfield. Corey Schnebel tried to step over it. Read nicely by Santos. Freehold Township trying to string things together. Tremendous pace in the midfield. Zimmerman plays it long to the corner. Corey Schnebel chips inside. Kevin Duffy up. Couldn't get ahead on it. It was headed away by O'Connor. Santos, tricky move. Field Township players are giving it everything they've got. They're sliding at every 50-50 ball. I don't know if it's intentionally or not, but they're after every ball, really pushing people forward. Really going after this equalizer. Duffy to Zimmerman. A shot. Great oh. save by Peters. That was shot a chance was, there. Shot was taken by Vaughn, and Mike Peters Went to his knees and made a great save. Yes, he did. He went low to his right, got the right hand down, and stopped that drive from Vaughn. Good ball, good build up by Freel Township, laid off by Zerman to the foot of the oncoming Vaughn, who hammered a good shot, went to the near post. Peters made a great save. Perhaps their best chance of the whole day. Three minutes remaining in the match. That's a Tough break for Freehold Township. CBA looking to hold on. Freehold Township looking to equalize. It'll be a throw in for Freehold Township. Oh, 
Two minutes and 30 seconds remaining. One nothing. CBA still leads it. They scored in the first quarter, and that's been it. Freehold Township has <laughs> frantically been trying to equalize, but unfortunately for the Patriots, they can't get the ball in the back of the net. Goalkeeper Mike Peters just came up big on the save for CBA to preserve the one nothing lead. Closing in on the two minute mark, two minutes and seven seconds to go. CBA will try to utilize the clock to their advantage. 155 remaining. Let the time run off. Nice move by Raymond. And a nice tackle by Dermer. John Real to Santos. Santos falls down. Duffy plays it out wide. Zimmerman will try to run it down. And it'll be a throw in for Freehold Township. 1.30 to go. This is Pellin. <laughs> Olay, Bobby, it's like a bullfight the way <laughs> guys, a lot of matadors out there today. Dermer now with the throw in, 115 to go. One to nothing is the score. Schnebel tried to flick it on. Raymond fans on it. Well, they've got just about everybody in the box. Gooder way off of his line. Look at Pellin, uh, look at Booth limping after the ball. And here comes Jim Roros. He's got a runner inside. Raymond, and coming back to knock it away, Corey Schnebel, 50 really, seconds to go. Really did well to hustle back from this far side. Don't want to finish, Bob. <laughs> 35 seconds to go. That clock is official. And apparently it isn't, Bobby. That's it. And there's the whistle, ending the ball game, one to nothing, Joe. And considering the conditions, quite a ball game. Oh, yes it was, Bob. These teams, besides having to fight each other, had to fight the elements. Uh, they had their hands full today. It was a good match. We saw that goal early on by CBA. Both teams really went at each other very hard, but it's really t difficult to put anything together offensively in terms of uh, three or four passes. The ball just wasn't cooperating today, skipping away from players. Uh, a good day for defenders in terms of uh, getting down and making slide tackles, really putting pressure on you, man. But tough to put together offensively. Okay, so Jim Mullen scored at the 10 minute and 15 second mark of the first quarter on an assist from Jim or John Rogers for CBA, and that's the extent of the scoring. One to nothing is the score. A lot of soccer action coming up on TV 34 on Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. We'll have the Monmouth County semifinals for you. Then on Friday night at 8 p.m., it'll be Notre Dame taking on Joe Donahue's Monmouth College Hawks in a big game for Monmouth, very important in the development of their soccer program. And then Sunday night at 7 p.m., the finals of the Monmouth County High School Soccer Tournament. So a tremendous amount of high school soccer in store for you. Hope that you stay with us and catch those games. This has been a great match. CBA wins it by a score of one to nothing over Freehold Township. As we mentioned, this match has been sponsored by Century 21, Einbinder Realtors, America's number one top seller right here in Monmouth County. We hope you've enjoyed this one from Rutgers Stadium. The final score, one to nothing, CBA defeating Freehold Township. CBA in great control now of the Shore Conference A North Division. They hold a two-game lead with only two games to go in that competition. So CBA enjoying a great season. They go to 14 and one on the season. Freehold Township falls to eight, five and two. We hope you've enjoyed this one for Joe Donahue on Bob Lampin and saying so long and thanks for watching.